If you prefer to design a database first and then code JPA entities to map the tables or develop an application over an already existing database, then the reverse engineering feature will be extremely handy for you and save a lot of time from routine work. Using the Entities from DB action, you can convert selected DB tables and their attributes into JPA entities in a few clicks, including constraints, indexes, column properties, and so on. JPA Buddy deeply understands your model. In most cases, it can properly detect cardinality, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many. The best part of it is that we don't need to regenerate the whole entity if something changes in the database schema. Instead, JPA Buddy just updates the existing entity declaration. Let's see it in action. For the beginning, we'll create a database and JPA entities for a small blog application. It will store blog users, their posts, and will display statistics, the number of posts created by a user. Our first step is creating the database tables using JPA Buddy and IntelliJ IDEA, and we'll start by establishing the database connection. First, add connection parameters to the Application Properties file. Now, we can set up the connection with the help of JPA Buddy. It reads all the values from the Properties file and uses them in the Data Source Wizard. Now we can use the built-in Database Console to execute DDL and create database tables. For the first version of the application, we'll need two tables, user and post. One user can write several posts, so the relation cardinality is many to one, and we create a foreign key in the post table to reflect this. Also, to improve query performance, we'll create an index for the first and last name fields in the user table. Let's execute the script and refresh the database content. As we can see, everything has been created successfully. Now we need to generate entities for these tables. With the help of JPA Buddy, we'll be able to manage this task easily. In the JPA Structure panel, select the JPA Entities from DB action and pick the Post table in the wizard. JPA Buddy reads the table structure and suggests entity attribute types based on table column definitions. We'll use the Identity strategy for the ID column to generate the primary key value. Let's select the User ID reference column. JPA Buddy analyzes the reference and automatically selects the User table for importing. We'll select all columns to map them to JPA Entity attributes. The Post entity will contain a reference to the user as per table structure. Also, JPA Buddy allows us to create a one-to-many reference from users to their posts. It cannot be defined explicitly in the relational database, but it's a valid case for the object-oriented JPA data model. As you remember, we also have an index for the user table in the database. JPA Buddy can import it as well. Just select the checkbox to instruct Buddy to do this. Finally, let's define a separate package for our entities and generate the code. Here we go. All entities have been generated, all references are there, and we can see index definition as well. Let's add some extra validation to our entities. Limit the maximum length of the first and last name to 50 characters. Uh-oh, we've forgotten to add the data about the user's email and last activity date and time into our application. As usual, we'll start with the database update. Let's write some SQL to add appropriate columns to our tables. With JPA Buddy, we don't need to recreate entities from the database when something is updated. Buddy allows us to update the existing entity code without losing our updates. Open the user entity definition and invoke the attributes from DB action from IntelliJ IDEA generate menu or JPA palette and select email and last activity attributes. It's always a good question which data type to use for the last activity attribute. In Java, we can use various data types to store date and time. During reverse engineering, Buddy allows us to choose the data type according to coding conventions set for our application. That's it! The new attributes have been added to the entity. And for the final piece, we need to display user statistics. To avoid complex aggregation queries in the application, 
We'll create a database view for this and we'll fetch data from it. To display the statistics in the application, we'll create an entity mapped to this view. Let's do it the same way we did to generate entities based on tables. Invoke the Entities from DB action and select the view. DB views do not have primary keys, but JPA entities must have an ID. Therefore, we need to find a field or a set of fields that can act as an entity identifier. User ID looks like a good candidate for this. Here we go. The entity has been generated. In general, we can't save data to a view, so the entity should be immutable. JPA Buddy has generated the code in a way that reflects this. To ensure developers don't create new instances in the business logic, the entity's zero arg constructor required by the JPA specification is protected. Also, the entity contains only getters, so you cannot update attribute values. As you can see, we have an immutable entity mapped to the database view, and using it, we can easily select aggregated user statistics data for our application. JPA Buddy took care of the entity code quality for us. In this video, we've seen how to develop an application over an existing database with JPA Buddy. I hope these features can make your work easier and more joyful. Thank you for watching.